when we are developing regression models and when we have many independent variables like x1, x2, etc. and let's say one dependent variable y, there are situations when the independent variables might have moderate to high intercorrelations. So this issue is called multicollinearity when you have moderate to high intercorrelations among independent variables. Now what problems multicollinearity creates? If two independent variables contain same information to a large extent, one gains little by using both in the regression model. Why we should use both of them? And if we use both of them, always there will be some issues. Multicollinearity leads to unstable estimates as it tends to increase the variances of regression coefficients. So this is one of the key problems that multicollinearity creates. So how do we assess presence or absence of multicollinearity? There are many ways we can do that. Now one of the ways that I am including in this presentation is to obtain what is called variance inflation factor VIF. So when you calculate VIF, if it is more than 10, that will indicate presence of multicollinearity. When VIF values are smaller, that means we are not dealing with that problem. So if multicollinearity is present, what is the solution to this problem? One way is to keep only one of the two independent variables that are highly correlated in the regression model. So we can drop the other variable because both variables are bringing same information to the model. So there is no point in keeping both of them. So this is one of the ways or one of the solutions. There are many other ways which are not covered in this presentation. So I'll make use of one example to show how to assess presence or absence of multicollinearity using VIF. And I'm going to use R package called Faraway that has a data set called DIV USA. Dependent variable in this data set is divorce and independent variables so we have five variables which are independent variables. So let's use library far away. So we can activate this package and we want data named div USA. Let's say we want to look at top few rows. So head So you can see there are several variables. First column is year and then you have divorce rate, unemployed. If you want to understand what these variables are, we can type with a question mark div USA and in the fourth window you can see it describes each of the variables in this data set. So this is a data frame with 77 observations on seven variables. First variable is year, which is from 1920 to 1996. So basically 77 years. And then you have the dependent variable, which we are using called divorce. So this is divorce per 1000 women aged 15 or more. And then you have unemployment rate percent female participation in labor force aged 16 plus and then you have marriage so marriages per 1000 unmarried women aged 16 plus so this is for each year then you have birth births per 1000 women aged 15 to 44 and then military personnel per 1000 population so we can use variables starting from unemployed to military as independent variables and we are going to use divorce as the dependent variable. What we can do is we can remove from our data set first variable called year. So let's create our own data, my data, data frame and our data set is div usa all rows then I say minus 1 for the first column. 
So we want to get rid of this column here. So I run this. So now if you look at head my data, you will not see first column that we had seen earlier. So I run this. So now you can see the first column is divorce and then you have all other variables. Now let's uh, do correlation for all variables in the data set. So you get too many decimals. So I'm going to round this off by using round. Let's say we can round this to two decimals. Let's look at some higher value. So between birth and marriage, there is a positive correlation and it is 0.67. We can make use of variance inflation factor to assess whether these correlations are really statistically significant or not. And if we get a value of VIF for birth and marriage more than 10, that will indicate that definitely we should use only one of these two variables. So let's do a multiple linear regression model. I'm going to use linear model and our dependent variable is divorce and then we have tilde sign I will put a dot for all other variables comma our data set is in my data and this model I'm going to store in let's say my model so we run this and if you want to look at the model So this is the model, the intercept is 2.4 and these are the coefficients. Now let's do summary of my model. So this gives you more details. You can see the model is divorce versus all other variables, all other independent variables. So all five independent variables are included. If you are looking for statistical significance, and let's say we are aiming for 95% confidence level. So in that case, unemployed we can treat is not really that significant. Also military variable is not very highly statistically significant as far as prediction of divorce is concerned. But other three variables seem to be highly statistically significant. You can also see the p-value is very small indicating the model is significant. So now let's uh, check whether we have this multicollinearity problem or not. So for that, we can use function VIF and say my model and run. So these are variance inflation factors for each of the five independent variables. And you can see all these values are in fact less than five. For severe multicollinearity problem, the value should have been more than 10. But since for all five independent variables, the values are smaller, much smaller than 10, we can safely conclude that we are not having multicollinearity problem as far as this data set is concerned. So these low values of VIF also indicate that the estimates that we develop based on this model will be more stable.